I'm Nancy Silverton and I am the co-owner of Pizzeria Mozza here in Los Angeles. I've invited you into my kitchen so I can show you how to make my pizza dough. As you can see, I don't need a lot of fancy equipment or a lot of ingredients to make a great pizza dough. All I really need is a mixer and a scale. My pizza dough is not based on a one-step method. I divide that dough making into two steps. The first or preliminary step is called the sponge. I'm fermenting half of the flours with the yeast and letting them sit for a minimum of an hour and a half to actually overnight. Creating a sponge with half of the flour and letting it ferment, I get better flavor and better texture. I'm gonna start out with 15 ounces of water. I'm gonna to add to that half an ounce of fresh yeast, a tablespoon of rye flour, a teaspoon and a half of wheat germ, and then all of my flour. So, just mix those ingredients up with a wooden spoon or your hand, just until they're combined. And then let's wrap this up in plastic. And this is going to sit either for one and a half hours at room temperature until it comes up and doubles in volume, or better yet, overnight in the refrigerator. The sponge that I'm using, I have actually let sit overnight in my refrigerator. I prefer an overnight sponge, more flavor, but also what it does is it ensures that my dough after mixing is gonna be cold. And that gives me a lot more flexibility. You know, I'm gonna be mixing the dough for 10 minutes in the small mixer. And what happens is it really heats up the dough. And once that dough is heated up, it is going to cause the dough to react and rise much quicker. The only downside to that is that you have to think a day ahead if you're gonna make pizza. You can't wake up in the morning and say, oh, I want pizza for dinner. Uh, my sponge is nice and bubbly and alive. Uh, it's easy to see where a sponge got its word for because it looks like a sponge. Just like when I made the dough, you always wanna start out with liquid. I'm gonna add my remaining flour. I'm adding a little bit of barley malt to my dough. If you can't find barley malt, a mild honey is also a good addition. What that does is it gives the dough just a hint of sweetness, but it also helps the dough with getting that beautiful brown color in the oven. So I'm gonna mix on low for two minutes, and then I'm gonna add the salt. I think whenever you mix in an electric freestanding mixer, a lot of flour into the dough, I think it takes only one time that you turn the mixer on too high and the flour goes everywhere before you realize whenever you add a lot of flour to anything in that mixer, you gotta start slowly and a low speed. Okay, two minutes and I'll add the salt. And now I can turn the mixer up to a high speed and I'm gonna mix for 10 minutes until that dough cleans the sides of the bowl. Okay, so when it gets close to 10 minutes, if you have measured or weighed out correctly, your dough should be coming together it should be cleaning the sides of the bowl. But if you listen carefully, all of a sudden, not only do you hear the roar of the engine motor, you also hear the slapping sound of the dough. And my dough is ready. Ready not to shape and bake, but ready to proof. There we go. So choose a nice, deep, preferably ceramic or wooden bowl. 
lightly oil it. And dump it in. It's initially seems very sticky. Um, resist the urge to add more flour. I promise you that as the dough sits for that first 45 minutes and we give it a fold and let it sit for another 45 minutes and give it a second fold, all the strength that's going to be necessary to make a dough that feels right will have happened. So I'm going to cover the bowl with plastic wrap and I'm going to let it sit out at room temperature so that it doubles in volume. This dough is gonna sit at room temperature for about 45 minutes and we'll give it its first of two folds. Okay, it's been about 45 minutes. Uh, my dough has clearly doubled in volume, so I'm going to give it the first of its two folds it's gonna get. Flour the surface. Make sure you have a nicely floured table to turn it out to. Take the dough out of the bowl. And we're simply going to deflate it. Bring it back into a ball. Put it back in the bowl. And I'm gonna cover it and let it sit another 45 minutes until it doubles in volume once again. And then we're gonna be able to scale the dough, shape it, and bake it. Okay, my dough has risen for the second time after my second fold. 45 minutes here, beautiful, beautiful dough doubled in volume, and I'm ready to scale it and round it. I need a well-floured surface. Bring the dough out of the bowl. A little flour. Ah, looks great. And I'm going to scale it into uh, four ounce pieces. Now we're ready to shape the dough into rounds so that we can eventually stretch it into pizza. You need enough flour on your work surface so that the dough doesn't stick to the table, but not so much that the dough slides around. You need to get a little bit of friction between the dough and the work surface to get a nice rounded ball. Dip the end in flour so it doesn't stick to the baking sheet. Okay, so once this dough is shaped, lightly dust the top with flour so it doesn't stick to the linen towel. And you just want to take one of your favorite tea towels and lay it on so that the dough doesn't form a skin. And I'm going to let it sit at room temperature for about an hour so that the dough relaxes and it'll be proofed and ready for me to stretch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.